Okay, so this is part two. We're going to be continuing from this slide, which is at the end of part one. And we're going to be moving on to acceleration. Now with acceleration, looking at this previous uh, diagram of a car moving uh, at a constant velocity towards the right in a positive direction, and we have calculated this velocity to be 10 meters per second. This position went from 0 to 10 in the first second, from 10 to 20 in the second second, 10, 20 to 30 in the third second, so on and so forth, making us uh, believe that the velocity is 10 meters per second. Since the velocity is 10 meters per second, and we're going to plot the graph now instead of position time graph, we're going to plot it on a velocity time graph. Velocity being on the y-axis and time being on the x-axis. By plotting the graph, we have we basically look at this and we see a perfectly horizontal line, because what happens is at the end of the first second, the car is traveling at 10 meters per second, right, right here. And then we take 20 divided by 2, we have uh, 10 meters per second, 10 meters per second again on the second second, third second, fourth, fifth second is the same. So then now, if you look at this graph. And you look at the con uh, the consider the fact that the car is moving at a constant velocity. Constant meaning no change. There's no change in a car's velocity. That means the car will have zero acceleration. Okay, zero acceleration. Constant velocity always means zero acceleration. That means no change in direction, nor is there a change in speed. So now with a different graph, what can you tell me about this graph? And then what can you tell me about the slope of this graph? Okay, so uh, I will be using this graph again in class um, when we talk about uh, velocity time graphs. And that will be on Thursday because uh, since it's a shorter week, the graph, uh, this will take the, over the, the place of small group work for a time. And I'll be allowing group work on Wednesday and Thursday. Okay, so go ahead and take, hit pause and try to write down as many things you can tell me about this graph. Remember, this graph is not a position time graph, but a velocity over time graph. Okay, go ahead and answer any, these two questions, but pay particular attention to the first question. What can you tell me about this graph in detail? All right, go ahead and pause and uh, see what's going on with that for you. All right, so the graph that was previously shown was a velocity time graph. So uh, we know that this graph has a positive, I guess a positive slope, so that helps. And then since this graph is in the positive region, we have some pretty clear understanding of what that means. So a velocity will be negative if it's in a negative region. So since it's the positive region, we have y positive, x is positive. The y area is positive 10 meters per second, positive 20 meters per second, positive 30 meters per second, 40 meters per second, and 50 meters, all positive because it's in the positive region. But if the graph dips below the x-axis, well, that's a little different. It's now having a graph, well, first of all, is that even possible? If the graph dips below the x-axis, hmm, interesting, think about it. Well, the velocity is negative when it lies lines in a negative region. So if you didn't catch on earlier, that basically tells you that the velocity is negative. doesn't mean that it's going slow. It's basically saying that it's moving in the negative direction, or in your case, left or down. Okay. Positive velocity means the object is moving in a positive region. Negative velocity means the object is moving in a negative direction, so on and so forth. And um, if an object is moving in a positive region, and it has a positive direction, that means the line is located in the positive region of the velocity time graph. Now, it's moving in the positive direction as long as it's in the positive region in the graph. If it's sloping up, it's fine. Sloping down, it's still moving in a positive direction. We'll talk a little bit more about that, okay? But uh, consider that there's many, many possibilities, and it's really up to you to interpret, and it's kind of hard for me to kind of go over every single detail. So just analyze the graph. For the for by looking at the axes and the units and um, how the, the the graph is sloped and such. So here are some examples, and it, this will probably give you a better heads up as to what's going on. Okay, so if you notice both of these graphs, the line is in the positive region right over here. That means this car is always going to be heading towards the positive direction. So if it's a car, it's moving towards the right or the positive direction. If it's like a, a rocket, it's moving up. Okay? So with the first graph, 
They're both moving at a positive velocity, but what's going on with this? You see that the velocity is increasing because the slope is increasing. That means this car is moving faster and faster and faster in the positive direction. It's accelerating in the positive direction because there is a slope. Try to make the connection earlier uh, in the first slide of this uh, part two. Uh, basically, a slope of a velocity time graph makes it an acceleration, velocity over time. Change in velocity over time is an acceleration. Remember the definition of acceleration. Now, this car is still moving in the positive direction or towards the right, even though you have a negative slope. What that means is that the cars originally start off with a pretty high speed, but then it slows down to zero. See that? Now over here, both of these graphs on the right are um, moving in a negative direction or towards the left. But this one, since it has a positive slope, means a positive acceleration. Negative velocity positive acceleration means that this car is moving slower and slower and slower and slower and eventually stopping. And then you have this last graph, the fourth graph. If you notice at the start of the time you have uh, zero meters per second, meaning that it's moving, no it's not moving, but it's moving towards the left because its acceleration is also negative. Negative velocity, negative direction negative direction and you have a negative acceleration means that the car is moving faster and faster and faster in a negative direction. So there's some correlation, okay? Now what happens when a line on a velocity time graph crosses the x-axis from a positive region to a negative region? What that basically tells me that the object has changed directions, okay? So very simply if I'm driving forward and then I stop, then I put my car in reverse. Or another way to look at it is I make it a U-turn. Okay? So those are different ways of looking at the graph. Okay? So over here, to sum it up, acceleration, positive, velocity in the positive region means that this car is speeding up. Over here, since it's a negative region, okay, and you have a negative acceleration, negative slope, the car is accelerating or changing its speed, going faster and faster in a negative direction. And these two are the opposites, where you have a positive velocity in the positive region, but you have a negative slope. Opposites of directions in velocity and acceleration generally means the car is going slower. Again, same thing here. Negative region, positive slope means it's going slower. As you can see, that this graph is approaching the zero, approaching the x-axis. If it's approaching the x-axis, it's zero. But if it crosses the x-axis, it means it has changed direction. So at first, it was going in a negative direction pretty, pretty fast. And then it slows down, slows down, slows down, stop. And then it moves back. Okay? Uh, it moves in a positive direction. Now, a question that I want to ask is, based upon any of these graphs, how are you able to determine the distance traveled by this object, okay? That's the first question. Distance traveled by an object looking at the velocity time graph. On a position time graph, it's easy because all you need to do is just look at the position relative to the point of origin. That tells you how far. Look at the y-axis. That tells you how far the car has gone. But you cannot look at the uh, velocity time graph and you can very simply find the, uh, you know, find the position. So you'll have to do something else. So I'll ask that question in class and unless someone asks me first in, that, in which case then you'll be um, getting the answer. So it kind of pays attention here. I've got to think about it, okay, really think about it. And my hint to you to find out the position or how far the car has traveled from the point of origin looking at a velocity time graph, a graph like this, okay, or um, a graph that looks like this. You should probably um, where's the hint is to look at the units look at the units okay so if you look at this difficult velocity time graph you have a flat line what's a flat line mean on the velocity time graph a horizontal line and then you have a you know steep line what does it mean when it crosses over the x-axis and then you have another flat and you have a curved line what do you think a curved 
line concave up on a velocity time graph means. Okay, so if you look at this, um, for about three seconds, this car is moving at a constant rate. Moving at a constant rate of 30 meters per second. There's no acceleration, therefore the slope is zero. At the third second, it begins to have a negative slope. What does a negative slope mean on a velocity time graph? If you say that the car begins to uh, accelerate in a negative direction or decelerate, and you know, if you use, you know, layman common English word for opposite of the accelerate is decelerate. It slows down, slows down, slows down, slow down. So over here it is now 10 meters per second. You see how original is 30 meters per second. And less than one second, it stops. But not only does it stop, it begins to travel south. And when it travels south, it's now moving at negative 10 meters per second. But at this point, for the next, oh, about, uh, I'd say two, three seconds, three seconds, it's moving at a constant rate because look at the slope here. The slope here is zero, zero acceleration. So it gets to about 10 meters per second in, in, while moving in a negative direction. And for three seconds, it is moving at a constant speed. And then it, it decelerates again. It, you see a positive slope over here? Yeah, positive slope mean, on a negative region means that the car is now slowing down to a stop. So this is a way to look at a, uh, a velocity time graph. So we are basically going to be looking at different ways of producing a graph using moving objects. So that's kind of the purpose. Okay. So hopefully you'll have time to have uh, watch through everything and um, ask questions. I'm sure some of you will have will be pretty confused because I got pretty confused too when I looked at these graphs. So we're spending four days on this stuff, and there's a quiz on Friday, and the quiz on Friday will likely take place towards the end of the period. Uh, as opposed to the beginning of the period. So we have the first um, maybe 20 or 30 minutes of class to uh, talk a little bit more, and I want to be able to give you some examples of moving things and hopefully you can do some graphs. Okay, uh, now uh, if you haven't done the QODs yet, it might be a good time for you to do some QODs. All right.